What's going on? Weird. Hey, hey guys, we're here. And I thought that was pretty funny. I just clicked your screen at the last minute and I said, I'm just going to see what you do. Oh. <laughs> what? Peg way. leg, the first guy in here? Oh my gosh. Peg leg is first. Nick, what's going on, brother? And Jeffrey. Yee -yee. So I had a lot of people talking to me about the um, video I came out with yesterday. And, you know, that was due to me talking to one of my students. But I had a lot of people wanting to know about the restriction. They're all like, man, I came to Prime and I have that restriction. Like, you mean I'm going to have to surrender my CDL? I was like, get with your state, but more than likely, you're going to have to surrender it. I mean, like, I have had nothing but questions, email, text message. My phone's been going off the hook about that video. And, you know, I wanted to be real with my audience and put it out first thing since it happened. How do you feel, feel about it, Tennessee Flatbed? You think that it's... You think that it's going to be an issue with people coming to Prime? I think it's going to be a lot of issue. I've had a lot of there. I've had a lot of people before telling me that they would like to have their their manual on there, and I've at that point was like, "Hey, yeah, you just go down and get your get a permit again, but you still have a CDL." And you just take it in a, in a manual truck, just the driving course. And now that changed what you were saying the other day. That changes the game up. So Yeah, it definitely does. See, they're saying mic issues just like we were seeing earlier before we started this. And we couldn't. So we are having mic issues right now. And um, I don't know what it is, but we are. I am having a mic issue majorly. But we were all like, show must go on. So let's get this done. But, yeah, you're right. It's going to be a major issue. Like, I mean, who would like to surrender your CDL after all the hard work that you put in to get it? Now, now, I understand the outlook of it is, like, we drive automatic trucks. Like, why pay for the manual trucks still when we're trying to phase them out? Because the automatic trucks are better on fuel mileage. The only thing is your future after you get your CDL. That's the main thing. And that's a lot of reasons people are here is because they want to get their CDL. That way they can get lots of static connection, yeah. most likely. It's not as bad as it was before we started. Oh! <laughs> then we have a camera fail. I moved, I moved this, uh, I moved this and it fell. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just having issues with it. So let's move it out the way. I'm just having issues with my mic today. I don't know what it is. And then I knock my camera down. But yeah, it's it's going to cause issues. Like, it would be nice if Prime brought in a couple manual trucks just for those guys that wanted to get the license without a manual restriction. You know, it would help out a lot, I feel like. I mean, we still have that. He's looking like a creeper. <laughs> it's. <laughs> we still have that pad truck down there that is manual. Yeah, I mean, maybe can... that's that's a possibility that when they come in, they say, hey, I'd like to test in the manual. I don't know. We'd have to ask that question. We'd have to make sure that'd be something that we could do. Yeah, yeah, people are talking about my static connection issues. It's all gr good. It's fine. It's not too bad. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, Steve-O, congratulations for passing your test again. I mean, I know it's old news because we went ahead and talked about it last week. But still, congratulations for getting your CDL, and I'm happy for you. Skull. Uh, fly better ready for Halloween already. Oh, yeah. Every day is Halloween to Miles. What's that thing you told me the other day? After 4th of July, it's what? After 4th of July, it's Halloween. 
So I have a lot of um, good ideals. Me, me and Tennessee flat better. We have a lot of good ideals for some videos to coming up. So we're kind of we're kind of thinking about interviewing some people. I hope that y'all like the interview series. But it's nice to get out there, interview some folks, get their opinion of crime and what's going on here. And there's I'm trying to get y'all more educational videos like. Like the reefer trailer the other day that was a lot of fun making the video it was awesome that tennessee flat better came out there and helped us out and you know we we got that video made and i think that it's going to be good educational purpose for somebody that might not know about a reefer trailer yeah i learned a lot just from that day sorry i didn't brought it up i said i didn't mean to run over you brother but i learned a lot from that day i didn't know that yeah a lot of that stuff yeah, it's kind of like a lot of people don't know why the grooves are in the floor of the reefer trailer. And that's to allow the air to go underneath the pallets and stuff. It's pretty interesting how they designed it. See, I knew the grooves, but I didn't know about that plastic backing plate. So Pigleg says, could you practice on a manual at home and test out on a manual during home time no you can't because they're saying that you're going to have to surrender your cdl to get it removed and you're going to have to get a permit again and take the test all over again in a manual truck so, because you have to show that it's all about this change in february that went down so the change in february was that we had to Steven. start first off it was you couldn't teach somebody yeah. unless you had two years of experience you could not help somebody get a cdl unless you that's them when you're cussing and then you had to be able to you have to go through this checklist before you can test your guy out but there's a lot of stuff involved in it, and you have to be an accredited school, and you have to do a lot of a lot more stuff, and you know that it's a lot more about accountability for your your guy that got your CDL. They want more paperwork involved. They want a tracking system of who taught this guy how to drive, because like this dude, say this dude Rex, they want to come back to me and be like. What did you teach this guy? You said that he knew how to do this. You said he knew how to do that. It's I think it's more of holding people accountable for what's going on. And they're going to find out who, I think at the end of the day, they're going to find out who's not teaching their students good, who's teaching their students very well. I think they're going to find out a lot of information like that. Now, me and Tennessee flat better. We don't have to worry about that because we're teaching our students outstanding. Like we're doing great with our students. We are putting knowledge into their hands and we are making them better. So we don't have to worry about that. Some other people might have to worry about that, like at CDL schools, different places like that. Well, we ain't going to worry about that because we do. We train our students to the fullest our, of our capabilities. And, you know, it all falls back to the paperwork, the tracking system and, you know, all that stuff. So it's going to you have to surrender your your part, your CDL and you have to get a new permit and you have to retest on everything. And it's horrible. Like, I feel for people like that. I wish Versatile Duckling was here, but he kind of ghosted us right before the live, I guess, because I sent him an invite and he could give you more information on that. That's why I was really hoping he was here, but I don't know what happened to him. Racist. Yeah. I'd like to know what happened to him, too. He probably fell asleep. Uh, that's a possibility. I, was there. Uh, I would tell Prime to kiss my something if they're going to surrender my CDL. And it's Prime's not Prime not doing it. Yeah, go it's, ahead, Tennessee. I was going to say, it. it's not Prime doing it. It's the DOT. It's uh, when you go into the into the DMV to go get your license, go get another permit to take the manual test. They're the ones telling you. It's not Prime telling us, telling you to surrender your permit or your uh, CDL. Yeah, so that's not Prime doing that to us. It is the states that you're in. It's it's pretty much federal. It's federal governments kind of threw this big uh, rent monkey wrench into everyone's plans. But it, it makes you second guess yourself whether or not you want to come to Prime or where you want to get your CDL. And 
where you get a restriction, where you do not get a restriction. It all, it's all about what you want to do after you get your CDL. And I know a lot of companies are switching to manual trucks. So don't freak out and be like, oh, if I get a restriction, I'm not ever going to be able to leave Prime. Yes, you will. There are plenty of companies that will take you with automatic restriction because they have automatic trucks. Do both of you train in Springfield? Uh, I try. I train in, we're both right now in Springfield and we're both training out of Springfield, but I've also trained in Pittston and I don't mind going back. I'm not scared of going back. I have a guy right now talking me into going and picking him up in Pittston and bringing him back and I'm probably going to do it because he's been following me a long time. I really don't want to make the trip, but you know what? He's been following me a long time. Great guy. And I've known him for a super long time. Plus, he has four pairs of shoes, four pairs of brand new shoes for me. Yeah, I'm probably going to go pick him up. At least I'll know I got all four pairs of shoes that didn't get flattened by a suitcase or messed up in a the truck. They're going to be super crisp and fresh. Y'all know how I am whenever it comes to shoes. Like, can't be all smashed up and creased up. What's up, Tennessee? What's that? <laughs> What's up? You look like you were going to say something. No, I'm just, I had to switch my laptop back over to my Wi-Fi, so I'm staying up the queue on the, on the live chat. So we got a $50 uh, super chat from Nick. Whoa. Whoa. Nick has tied with uh, Versatile Duckling for the biggest super chat we ever got on this channel Nick's a great guy Nick's been following a long time here's some Red Bull money look at him here's some Red Bull money see he's been watching this channel a long time he knows I drink a Red Bull I gotta get a Red Bull in the morning I'm getting a Red Bull in the morning (laughs) you gonna bring me one yeah I'll get you one (laughs) no wait 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 what is Tomorrow's Friday. No, I can't. I might be able to. I might get. I might get you. Depends yeah, because I, I won't be able to get one from the lunch truck tomorrow. Heck, they weren't even down there today. So, no, they weren't. Uh, Jeff wants to know who's saying this about surrendering your CDL if you want to test in a manual. Uh, right now, I know of North Carolina. I know of. South Dakota, where else was I getting messages from? New York, uh, Missouri. Trying to think of all the emails that I got today. Like, where are all the places that I got emails from today? There is a lot of states saying that you're going to have to surrender your CDL, get a new permit, start fresh. And that sucks. I'm not going to lie. Like you're trying to make a living out here and you have to take a break and relearn everything in two weeks. You know, it's, it's going to suck. It really is. I'm not even going to lie. It's going to suck. I learned that you, you two, I learned you can use two inch straps to keep your fuel tank on your truck. Oh, (laughs) what is that about? He didn't send you that bit, that picture, did he? He sent it to me. It was a, a reefer. He said, I know uh, what reefers uh, drivers use f- straps for. And it had a fuel tank held on by two-inch strap. Wow. Hey, well, you know what? Sam has that flatbed experience. He should know the size, the size strap <laughs> he needs to hold the fuel tank on. I like that one. Yeah, I was going to say, is this one better? <laughs> I like that one. Weasel Piss says, Tennessee, you're looking sexy. Whoa. Oh, his that wife didn't like that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not going to get that off the screen. <laughs> How long have you guys been live? Um, 15 now 15 minutes. minutes. Basically, the government. Yeah, it yep. is the government. 
I'll agree with you there. They've they wanted to put their hands into trucking and they wanted I think a lot of it had to do with there was a lot of trucking accidents and it was starting to get ridiculous how many trucking ap- accidents there was. So their way of preventing that or making there be less accidents is actually put their hands into trucking and you know pass this and pass that to try to make it safer out there. I'm on the East Coast time currently, and I know they do Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central time. Yes, we do. So, like, Sam already knows it's live time, baby. You need to ask any questions, whatever questions you need to ask. We're here Thursday night. Holy cow. Holy cow, look at that. Bro, another $50 super track? Here, I beat Duckling. Oh, <laughs> Duckling ain't going to be happy. Duckling. That definitely deserves another skull, Nick. Yeah, bro. Like, man, that deserves this too. The, um, you got to put the money flying on the screen. There you go. Nick is making it rain over here, man. Holy cow. I wasn't saying truck. Let me look through the money pile over here. Let's see. <laughs> I wasn't saying you had a, um, you got a spot lower in two. There we go, right there. Oh, I got yeah, one right here. I wasn't saying that you had a beat <laughs> duckling, but hey, thank you, man. That's freaking awesome. I appreciate it. You definitely beat duckling, though. You take the there, win. I got a better one right there. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I was telling you to go to. <laughs> I got this one, and I got this one. I, oh, oh, right here. You can't see my nose, though. It's kind of weird not seeing my nose. My mouth has its own spot right here, though. I was say, drop down just a little. There you go. Oh, too far. <laughs> <laughs> man, Nick making it rain over here, man. I'll get rid of this stuff now. Got cash flying all over the place on there. Now, if you donate that much just to my GoFundMe, then we'll, then I'll I'll take off a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> David Smith says, "What are the physical requirements to drive flatbed? Do like do they have to do stairs, master exercise, and whatnot? Ha ha ha! So Tennessee's going to answer that one." Unfortunately, Tennessee is the... not going to answer that one. So there is an agility <laughs> test where you have to pick up some weights. You have to use proper lifting techniques that are safe, like ones that uh, aren't going to screw up your back, like you're going to lift with your knees. Like, ain't that crazy how he just left when we needed him? So you're also going to have to pick up a car. I'm back. And lift it above your head and put it on the shelf, and you're gonna have to climb a ladder. Oh, nope, he's back. No, nope. yep. That's I your was, question. I, I didn't realize that uh, it turned me off of the camera when I did that. Uh, no, the agility test actually changed now. You're gonna pick up a tarp, put it up on a shelf, take that tarp back off that shelf, and lay it on the floor. That's it. That's it. Yep. Put that mask back on, Tennessee. That shit was tight. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> I don't know. You've been switching so much. <laughs> Big Lick says, while training is important, the responsibility of safe driving is on the individual driver. DLT is getting too deep into micromanaging. You know, and that's true, too. Like, I, I tell most of my students, look. I can sit there and lead a horse to water all day long, but I can't make it drink. I can teach you how to drive safe. I can teach you how to back. I can teach you a lot of stuff, but it's up to you when you get off of my truck to practice these safety things that I've taught you. I can only give you the world, and it's up to you to do to do what you want to do with the world. Like, I've had students that I sent out, and, man, when they were with me, they were driving safe. They were doing excellent and they were freaking awesome drivers. And then they called me up and they're all like, 
they're all like, hey, I hit a car. And I was like, how'd you hit a car? And they would tell me that, like, man, I did this and I did that. And, you know, I hit a car, though. And I was like, you I'm weren't back. watching your mirror? And they're all like, man, like, I was slipping. I, I didn't watch my mirror. You know, it leads back to they weren't following what I taught them to do. Not my fault, but they needed to be able to follow those directions that they were given. So I agree, Pegleg. Like you can you can teach these guys everything, and then they can get out there and do whatever. Uh, I'm back, brother. David, oh, you're back. Yeah, David. What from what I know. And lift a 60-pound tarp from the ground over your head. Then you go. Then you go. That's what the standard when I went through. There you go, Tennessee. You can read that one. Yeah, DOT does ran by Joe Biden. That's where I feel. <laughs> uh, Tennessee has to wait for me to train. No, Tennessee has to wait for me to make some cash before I can get, before I can help fund your channel. <laughs> It'll still be there. <laughs> hey, David, go to Walmart, pick up a 60-pound bag of dog food, probably going to, probably good to go. Yeah, and that's right. You can go practice with a, Bag of dog food. Go buy a bag of dog food and you practice lifting it up and putting it above your head. Pretty much. <laughs> Sam. Um, governments always has a hand in trucking. What you think, Tennessee? Oh, yeah. I watch cars going down the road at don't even look safe to drive on the road, but we get stopped every five seconds for one light being out. <laughs> See, handicap. Uh, Lone Wolf says, I'm not a trucker yet, David, but at 16, I used to do it for my grandfather. He liked taking me on the truck. You got it in your blood, bro. Like, I'm telling you, whenever I had people that got onto their grandfather's trucks and stuff like that, uncle's truck, whatever, it is in your blood. You don't know it, but you would do freaking awesome out here. Not going to have no problem driving a truck. It's in your blood. One of the biggest things is having a fear of the truck, really. Once you get over the fear of the truck, you're golden. What do you think, Tennessee? Yeah, I have a lot of students that uh, once they get comfortable with that truck, then they have no problem with it backing it up. And then they get a lot better. If DOY requires mandatory CDL training, they should require training for all driver's license. I, I agree. Some people should not have their driver's license like... Does Prime have trainers capable of teaching manual transmissions? I can. I can. Yeah, we have a lot of them. The thing is, we don't have manual trucks. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there's a comment right there, the GoFundMe, and then there's the there we go. That's what I was uh, doing. Bro, Bradley <laughs> Ronk says, Sup, bro? What's changed with the live with the audio trends? Auto trends. So, so what I was talking about in the video, like, we'll just, I'll sum up the video real quick in case y'all missed the video. Pretty much, if you do not have a, if you have the automatic restriction on your license right now, and you want to get that removed. It is not as simple as it used to be. It is not go to the DMV and take a test on a manual. It is an 100% have to surrender your CDL 
get a permit because you have to show the time that you've been driving. You have to show all that stuff that you have to show, you know, the criteria that needs to be met and all of that stuff to get it to be able to take the test. You're not qualified to take the test unless you have all those hours accounted for, unless you have somebody that signed off that, hey, you're a safe driver, you you know all of this information, you understand all this. So you have to pretty much start over with your CDL. It, and it kind of, you know, it is what it is. I think crime needs to start looking into maybe getting us some manual trucks out there for the people, or some, yeah, some manual trucks out there for the guys that want to go manual. The truck playing a move bit. Oh. Last time spending time with my wife at and my dad. Yeah, I'm having mic problems, bro. Thanks, Versatile, for like leaving us hanging today, bro. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we appreciate it because I named this stream just so you could come in and tell your side of the story. You should at least come in here real fast and tell your side of the story, bro. Like, I, you had the real life experience of this happening to you. So it would be awesome if you would at least drop in here and tell people what it really feels like to have to surrender your license. Uh, Lone Wolf says 100% flatbed down south, no uh, specification people. Driving without windshields. Then I see you got that one. Yeah, that's the first I've heard of that one, but there's some crazy stuff that goes on down south. <laughs> I don't even know what to say on that question. I have no idea. And the lie detector test determines that was a lie. Uh, uh, Jack Johnson, sir, you got a golden retriever on your chin, which wishes to get pet. Hey, you're the dog lover. You go ahead and answer that one. On July 17th, at 11.22, around 9 p.m., Dan is away from home. He suggests a notification of food that is taken on the property. And that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, Bradley Ronk says, word. Odd thing is when I got mine, they never put the restriction on it, and you trained me. Yeah, I trained Bradley Ronk. Hey, Bradley, you hold on to that CDL forever. They didn't put the restriction on there. Don't ever let them put it on there. Be like, hey, why are you putting that restriction on me? I didn't have it before. Bradley was a pretty cool student of mine. Seen him not too long ago. Uh, Isaac, I mean, Steve-O, formerly known as Isaac's dad, is now also Jessica's dad. So in the last few weeks, he actually had, a, I guess, a daughter named Jessica. And now he is... Now he formed his own name, Steve-O. He's Isaac and Jessica's father. Following along, Tennessee? Yep. My guy, my bad, guys. I'm on my way. We're going to dock you on that one. Yeah, we're docking pay right now. <laughs> like, we're, we're, not, we're not happy about that because I was. you're all like, hey, right, let me go ahead and... I'll tell you what's up with it. Uh, Jack never thought about it like that. It does look like a golden retriever. What looks like a golden retriever? Golden retriever. 
Where was that comment at? I'm going to go reread it real fast. Yeah, that made no sense. Sir, you got a golden retriever on your chin. Oh, chin. Talking about the beard or what? What's he talking he's, about? He's either talking about your beard or my beard. Well, who has the nicer beard? Look at that nice beard. You got a nice mustache going on. I wish I could have a mustache like that. Look, my beard is a mess right now. I haven't edged up. I need to bring the sides down. You see all this right here? I don't like this. Like, I need to do some work to it. Man, my beard is so long. I just noticed it. My beard is so long that it doesn't even fit in the camera. <laughs> See that? I didn't even notice that right now. It's so long it don't even fit into the camera. Where were we at? Uh... Well, Duckling wants you to send him the email. Oh, he needs the email of the link. I don't even know if I have his email. I sent it on Messenger. Yeah. Tennessee, read his email out. He didn't post it. I don't know his email. Did yeah, I don't know his email, email either that I remember. Oh, I found it. I found it. I say, it's on my phone, and I'm not playing that game again. <laughs> yeah. Here, you go ahead and read the, read the next comment right there while I send this email. Yes, I'm uh, the South by law. You can drive without a windshield as long as you wear eye safety glass. Safety. Well, that's any vehicle. I know from working in the industry. Yeah, that, I mean, that's just like motorcycles. You have to wear, have glasses Who the on. still uses Yahoo as an email? Oh, my bad. Thinking out yeah. loud, my bad. No, that is weird, though. <laughs> yeah. He might as well have thrown out, thrown out AOL.com. Do you guys know any of the Pittston trainers? Are they good people? The Pittston trainers are good people. I, I know a lot of them. There's a lot of great ones over there. And like, like really, really great people over there. So yeah, I I think that you're gonna be good to go to Pittston. I really am. Your beard looks like a golden retriever. Yeah, mine or Tom or Tennessee flat betters. Nobody wants to do manual anymore. Easier said than done, that's for sure. Yeah, Junior, Junior, he he was training on a manual for a long time. Like he's trained a lot of people on his manual. And you know, I I really respect that. I train I train people on a manual, and that that was pretty hard, especially since my truck was automatic. So we would go over the road and we would come back, and then it's like you would cut somebody's knees out from under them. I would have to get a pad truck that was manual. I'd have to teach them how to back with the manual on the pad, and then I would have to let them drive around town with the manual transmission. And it was hard, you know, it, because they were all, you know, the good thing about it was they got all the nerves out of the way by checking their mirrors, driving the automatic, all that stuff. But whenever it came down to it, it was all like, oh, you know, we drove my truck all this time, but here's this kind of piece of junk, no offense, Prime, not so nice of a pad truck that's been used by everybody and abused by everybody. And we're going to test out on it. So it wasn't the best thing in the world. But if you've got a, if you got an instructor or a trainer like Junior Honduras that his truck was manual, then you would go out with them, shifting gears, learning how to drive that manual. And when you came back to test out, you already knew how to drive it. And, you know, I remember whenever I was a PSD out there and my trainer, and my trainer, he, he just threw me in the seat and he was all like, drive this manual transmission. And I had no idea what I was doing. I was like, 
I was like, oh man, come on. Like, I, I have no idea what I'm doing in a manual truck. Like, I, I never even drove a manual car before I drove a manual truck, but he's all like, jump in the seat, man. You're going to be good. I was like, like, okay, I guess so. And I had to learn it on the fly. And that's how I learned how to drive the manual transmission is I was on a, I was at a rest area and he said, jump behind the wheel, go get on the highway, go faster, shift faster. And I was like, what the heck is going on? Like, man, I'm over here grinding gears. I'm all like, I don't feel good about this. He's all like, well, you learned it on the simulator. I said, man, this does not feel like the simulator. Your truck is different. So, you know, it was it was like that, man. Just drove, thrown into the seat. What was your experience on the manual transmission? I mean, it. I remember about two weeks of, or a week of Sims class and then a week of coming back after driving my, my brother-in-law's automated to get ready for the test. So... And then taking it on the test, I had an examiner tell me this first person that's ever floated gears um, the way I did, and then taking off in seventh gear and actually getting her to move. So, so you picked it up pretty quick, then. Oh yeah, I just think of Adam's family on double or double clutching. Twisted Jake's from the Wild West, Wild Wild West YouTube channel has a good beard hair product. I can't <clears throat> send me the link. Yeah, I'm looking remember. for another one. I'm about out of what I use. I'm using. I just switch kinds. So I was using um. Now, Yeah, I was using some from England. England? You don't remember the name? No. About a show. I think it was called Amish. I'm trying to look it up because I don't want to say Amish. Yep, that's what I was using. Honest. Honest Amish Beard Balm and Honest Honest Amish Beard Kit is what I was using. I've just recently ran out of the stuff and I have not bought more. I'm trying out different stuff. Yeah, I'm about to run out of the shampoo and the, the conditioner for the beard. Jeffrey says you have to carry the 80 numbered tarp of, up a 13 foot ladder. Oh, we're not talking about my test. We're talking about Prime's test there, Jeffrey. Oh, he, uh, yeah, he, he he went second after I took the first one up. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah. Was, was the one he carried up heavier than the one you carried up or what? Yeah, because I carried up our steel and he carried up a lumber. Oh, man, you should have got that on video. Was it on that load that you brought into the yard? Yep. You can walk on top of that stuff? Yeah. I had to be what, very what careful, kind of, though. Can you say what kind of load it was? It was a um, styrofoam for a flat roof. So it's basically styrofoam insulation before they put tar down. Yeah, and I didn't know you could walk on top of it. I figured that it would just be like throw it over the top and figure it out. Yeah, no. I mean, it was a 13 6 tall load as long as the 48 foot trailer. So. I'd rather drive a manual truck than be a steering wheel holder like most prime drivers. We're not steering wheel holders there, man. Everybody is, if you want to put it that way. Yeah, there's a lot more that goes into driving the manual transmission than people think. You know, I mean, the automatic transmission. It's 
Now, it is nice for stop and go traffic and stuff like that. In the wintertime, you really need to know how to use it. I always suggest to my guys, hey, before winter, go ahead and get in there and take the automatics class so it can teach you how to drive the automatic transmission down in, in complaint. <laughs> weather. Bad weather. Bad weather. They call it in complaint. Whatever it's called. I can't say it. Tennessee ain't helping me either with it. <laughs> He's okay with being a steering wheel holder. Sam says, I can only hold a steering wheel. I can only hold a steering wheel. The government said I can't handle anything sharper than a hard-boiled egg. Tennessee, <laughs> how often do you check your tarps? Perhaps. I check my tarps every 150 miles or three hours, whatever comes first. And I pretty much I check my tarps every time I stop, too. I get out and walk around before I run off to the outhouse. And then when I come back, I go walk around it again. And then I get in the truck and go again. Look who just decided to drop in. There we go. There he is. Hanging and now he's not even paying attention. He realized he's out. full screen and he's just... Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> yeah, Hello. he went from hanging out with the wife to hanging out with a dude on the couch. Is that the wife back there with a beard? Yeah, yeah. So why don't you go ahead and tell us your experience? You go ahead and let us know your experience whenever it came to getting your automatic restriction removed. Uh, yeah, so I went, I talked to um, Stan. Stan coordinated with me about getting rid of my... Will you stop your shit? You're a distraction. Um, coordinated with me about getting my uh, automatic restriction lifted. At that point... I had already started practicing with um, one of the pad trainers. His name is Z. Practice with him. I learned how to uh, what? Learn every. You learned how to drive okay. it from Z. Yeah, I learned how to drive from Z. So um, we started out on the pad, doing circles around the pad. Uh, I learned how to double clutch and then um, float gears and then decelerate, which is you know downshifting. I learned all of that, and then it was to the point where I felt comfortable enough to take the test because you only have to take the test bobtail when you uh, – up. well, I guess, yeah, it's an upgrade. When you upgrade from an automatic restriction, and I was told that I couldn't take the test to get it because I didn't have a permit, and they, they told me that I had to go get a permit, and I asked them, well, would that put me back as a student? And they're like, yeah, that'll put you back as a student. Um, you'll still, you'll still be an employee, obviously, but you won't be able to, I wouldn't be able to take loads. I wouldn't be able to train anybody. Um, so I mean, cause I'd be on a permit. How many days? 14 days, 14 days, 14 days, just like every other student. So at that point I was like, yeah, I can't go 14 days without a paycheck. So I just opted out of that. Kept the restriction on my license and just kept pushing it after that. Yeah. Now, was that before February, the new changes in February, or did that happen after February? That was before the changes in February. I I'm wonder what, I wonder with, how um, it would be right now. As far as I understand, with the February 7th uh, FMCSA stuff that went in this uh, act, I think you have to take all the classes. You're basically you're basically starting over from step one. Wow. Hey, I have to let you know, by the way, I have to let you know that somebody beat your super chat tonight. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, that. yeah. Now, he didn't. Now, the number wise, he tied with you. So it was my highest one ever was $50. Yeah. Well, what he did is he did double $50. So it added up to the most I've ever got off of one live. So do I count that as the biggest one ever, or are you still the tied with you and him are both at the $50? How do I look at that? 
But he only did it once. He only did it once in, in chat. He didn't do it twice in chat. So we go with the most I ever made in a live chat was today. Yeah. Today from Nick. Oh, like, he even, put, oh, he that even put that in the chat? Oh, screw yeah. that guy. Share this video. <laughs> Nick's a long time follower. He's been following a long time. Manu manual auto, I don't care right now. It's about about the law. Yes about it just want to get behind the steering wheel and see these states see how much money i can save in a year's time well some of us some of us have families like all three of us all three of us right here we all have families so like whenever it comes to getting that restriction removed and having to be down two weeks we're we got families to feed we can't yeah. not make money for two weeks while we retake this class to redo our CDL to get that restriction removed. I mean, Tennessee, you know, I know we, I know all three of us, we make decent money in what we do, and I know we save up, and we have oh, yeah. that savings. But if we didn't do what we did and we were making regular driver pay, do you think we would have been all right with taking two weeks off? I mean, we could have afforded it, but we weren't going to be living the lifestyle we're living now. Yeah, no, we'd, we'd still be hurting. It would it would eat through the savings so fast. And then you got to also think, once you got your restriction lifted and went back to training, you start with fresh students, which means you go another 14 days without a paycheck because they can't test till then. So right, you're, it's going, not the you're going quite a while without a paycheck. Yeah, it's not the first week or two that you're going to be hitting hard. It's after yeah. that when you finally get work and you're going to be hit hard. Yeah. I think that comment's a little bit suspect right there. Um, yeah, that's a little weird. Dang. You should work I want to read it. All right, Hans, we figured out what you're all about now. There you go, Tennessee. <laughs> Look, Sam even said giggity. <laughs> <laughs> can't get his link but you can search wild wild west on youtube i hope i remember that to search that i'm highly doubtful though what is it he's no longer fugly what did you do did you get a did you shave your beard or something like did you why did he say you're no longer fugly because he was late that's because he, he was late, late to he was late to class <laughs> what <laughs> Bro, he left us hanging. He really did. Yeah, that's my bad. He left us yeah, hanging. I own that. Yeah. You know what? I'm sure if we were all doing something with our family, we'd all be there. Yeah, I just wish you would have told me hey earlier, hey, I'm not gonna make it because I was like, I named the stream like I completely said, I'm gonna be able to talk about that tonight. So I said, let me just name the stream. Hey, we're gonna talk about automatic restrictions yeah. getting removed. I lost complete track of time. We were playing Mario Party. And you know those games. You are the an expert on it because you've been through it. That's like, and that was before February. Now February came around, and it's like, I mean, how nervous would you be? Like, think about it. If you're a nervous tester, like I'm not really a nervous tester. I I pass mine all in one go. But some mm -hmm. people are a nervous tester, and they didn't pass on their first time. They didn't pass. Could you imagine, like, having all that stress all over again to get the restriction removed? Is it going to be worth all that stress? I don't know. With the way that the world is moving towards right now, manuals have been almost obsolete for, like, the past five years. Um, your trucks are all automatic now. Your cars are all automatic now. Motorcycles are virtually all automatic now. Only yours. Um, the new gold wings, the new rebels, the new shadows, uh, everything is going to automatic. Um, I don't think I don't think a manual restriction will be a problem in the next two to five years. I think we're moving so fast towards electric vehicles, especially with all the muscle cars that have now announced that they will no longer be doing fuel injected vehicles anymore. They're all going electric. I don't know. I don't I don't think it's worth it anymore. Something else. <laughs> Look at this right here. <laughs> hey guys, this is Russ, first time caller, long time listener. 
What's going on, Russ? And real quick, I know who Russ is. Real quick, we got another twenty dollar from Nick. We'll come back to you, Russ. Nick, a twenty dollar donation. It says I'll be in Springfield in a few hours. Then fire and ice tomorrow night for drinks. Just swing by. What are we doing? As long as the drinks night? are on you. We got anything going on tomorrow night? Uh, I'm hanging out with the old lady because I got to take her to the airport on Saturday. Oh, you're pointing this way. I'm over here. Oh, my bad. Over there. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, I don't know. We'll have to find out. So we're back on Russ real quick. Yeah, that's where I was trying to get. Do y'all know who Russ is? I know who Russ is. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, Russ. Russ, great guy. Awesome instructor. He started with Primal way back when. And he's he's been on the my, my fleet manager's fleet, his fleet manager's fleet. He's been on the fleet that I'm on for the longest. Like he is the king of our fleet over here. Uh, he interrupted He's been my on quiet Maurice time. Anna's fleet the longest. I think we will. We all went out to eat one time, and um, Maurice said he was like his sixth driver. I think I remember. So like he's been there for a long time. Great guy though. Awesome dude. So, do you sign another contract with Prime after going back and testing out on a manual? No, you're no, already an employee. Yeah, you're already an employee. They're just doing that to help you out, right? Yeah, you're already an employee. The only thing that I lack information on is how pay works at that point. That's something I probably should have asked because that might have changed my decision a little bit. If it was the $200, no. If it was the nine hundred dollars, I'd be like, "All right, yeah, okay, you gonna give me a guaranteed nine hundred bucks as a student to get my manual restriction lifted? And I'll do it." I, you I need went for the loan. Yeah, I should. No, no. You should have went for the loan and then quit, not under contract, and never had to pay the loan back. <laughs> no, that would suck. Well, that would be that's actually a good question because what I don't know. Yeah, you're already an employee. So yeah. you, I don't see. I don't think you would have to any contract. We got a question for Tennessee Flat Better. How do you dust your brakes? Drive. <laughs> he said drive. Duckling. Drive. Drive. I like to get out a maid outfit and put it on, and then I like to get my feather duster out there and then dust them off. <laughs> I was gonna say some shit like that, but. <laughs> of course do you have to run nitrogen through your airlines to make your load 500 pounds lighter what I don't think that would work and Too I think heavy. you're thinking about helium yeah helium see I <laughs> fell for that too <laughs> <laughs> what's going on Tad Tad Dillard the trucking industry in a is in a constant change from paper logs to ELD, planning trips via Atlas to GPS, the, using the Qualcomm to the Prime Mobile app. We have to adapt, and that's a hundred percent right. Oh yeah. Through my, even the short time I've been here, I've had to adapt to different stuff. Yeah. You know, and like I had to adapt from a manual transmission to automatic transmission. You will be more successful the more that you're able to adapt to changes and learn the changes. Like I always say, knowledge is power. So the more knowledge you have on the change, the more powerful you're going to be. I know. Think, I know. Um, I know. Me and you have been around long enough for the onboard switch from onboard to ELD. Um, that was an adjustment. How the uh, yard when the yard time was introduced that was new. 
Um, Dude, I was tripping when that came yeah. out. I was blindsided by yard movement. I read everything, and I just saw nothing about yard movement. I had to ask so many people about that. I asked the fleet manager. He was like, I don't know what that is. I yeah, it was – you get you get is. blindsided with new stuff all the time. Um, but I think I think we should always remember how to do the old stuff because the new stuff can go pretty south pretty quick. GPS goes out, the Qualcomm – I mean, there's multiple times that I've – try to enter in the Qualcomm GPS and it doesn't even show an address. It'll send me to the center of a town instead of the address I need to go to. So there's always, there's always uh, beneficial to know the old way as well as the new way. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's, it's nice to have something to compare something to. Here we go. We got uh, Martin Fleming for Tennessee Flatbetter. He says, what's up, Tennessee? And he's doing what's his up? Hand- How's it going, Martin? Rad, dude. How is it going out there on the road, by the way? You're going to have to wait like a long time for an answer. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> That's a phone call later. <laughs> Lone Wolf says, airlines on the trailer ever get moisture in them and freeze up? Not personally, no. If See, and I've had Tennessee is the expert on it. Let's hear it. He started talking. I was gonna first. say I've had to use uh, rubbing alcohol, drop a little bit in your line, and then air your system up, and wait a couple of minutes for that to dethaw it out. I've I've never had that issue personally. Um, I I drain during the winter time whenever it's that cold. I like to drain my tanks every once in a while. I'm, I don't. Like, I don't do it every single day I drive the truck. Like, I know they say do it every single day. I'm not that big of an overachiever. I don't do it every single day, but I do it enough that I feel like I get most of it out of there. Um, Versatile, you want to add to that? Uh, You know, me personally, uh, I've never I've never had any issue with moisture in the uh, airlines at all. I've heard of tricks and stuff like that to fix it, but other than that, I've never experience that myself all right i've had actually uh inbound actually told me that we need to start trying to maybe try to get our guys to do it during the summer too because they pull on that line every now and then and that the water that does come out smells horrible so maybe we need to try to drain that condensation out of there during the summer too so don't rust out that tank and prevent that air loss from a rusted out tank too. You you tell those you tell those inbound guys to stop huffing the stuff that comes out of my tanks. <laughs> well noted though. Um Bush didn't know who I am, but it's all fun to hear him guess. The moisture badger. So we have about 250 people to guess from. I need to go get my student phone, and there's going to be a lot of guessing. Yeah. Throw, throw out a hint, something. Twisted is is the maid outfit Friday attire. Maybe. <laughs> Hello from Kings, Illinois. Jason King says. What's going on, Kings? Martin says, great at a Walmart DC live on load. So your students, he has a yeah, skull. Yeah, you see the skull at the end of it? Yeah. <laughs> isn't, isn't that um, isn't that detention pay? You're going to be sitting yeah, there for a minute. heck of a detention pay for you guys. Walmart always sucks. I wonder what DC he's at. We're gonna have to wait a long time for that answer too. Yeah, we're we're, we're waiting. <laughs> Hint number one: You receive two gifts from a. Finish that out, please. <laughs> a mutual buddy and I that you had in your truck for a while. It was there after. So that is Andrew. That's Andrew. <clears throat> McCord, Andrew McCord. 
I was going to say, I started seeing the smoke come from years on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Sam says, You've been doing this. Good old Walmart unloads. I deliver mine tomorrow. Walmart, get that detention pay, guys. Get that detention pay. Make sure you're using those detention stamps. Yeah, use that stamp. Even Flatbed use them stamps. Flatbed ain't using them on all that your bills. They're always late. Anyway, Versatile Duckling has something to say about a detention stamp. I was going to say, use them on all your bills. It doesn't matter. Detention stamp every single one of your bills. A minute is a minute. For every stop, right? Every one of them. Because there's some hidden pay you get sometimes. You're all like, man, I wasn't even expecting any pay from that one. And I don't do it on the tire loads, though. You know what? I have a I have a sneaking suspicion that my yellow border is bothering you so much that you keep switching it to the screen. Yeah, it drives me nuts. Because <laughs> it's full CD. I kind of I kind of deduce that, man, because we don't sit on this screen often, man. It's weird. I actually like it like this better. Yeah, I kind of do, too. Uh, hey, Tennessee, have you ever slipped off your flatbed in icy weather? He wouldn't tell us the truth if he has. Let's hear it. Go ahead. I actually have, but I didn't slip off the tra the trailer. I was moving a tarp from the load and slipped on the edge of the tarp onto the bed and landed on the bed of the trailer. Yeah. It, it was not fun. Told the truth. And I had my keys in my pocket, my back pocket at that point. Correct, that's me. Look at that one hint, and I guessed them. <laughs> Have a good night. Hope you're all still doing those elk burgers. Yeah, so we were looking for elk burgers whenever he came down. We were looking for a ground elk, and we were going to cook some elk burgers, but we couldn't find none. What in the Joe Rogan or maybe are you we trying did to do? find elk burgers, and we were looking for – that's it. We did do elk burgers. We were looking for elk steak. Where was I at? Oh, there's where I was at. Okay. There you go, Diversital. Oh, they got to give me the long ones. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious. My grandfather helped a guy out of... Out stuck on the road. Alcohol evaporates, so I'm assuming it could help you out. Oh, with the airlines. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess that could work. I don't know anything personally. Um, alcohol does dehydrate me personally, so I would say I agree. Dude, what the hell? <laughs> said, I'll be at 5K miles down by Saturday. So Matt was my guy. Matt was a longtime follower, and he tested out. He had a test two times, but he got his CDL at the end of the day. You know, I'm still the map. I'm at the record right now for me. I'm on my, let's see, we failed backing, we failed backing, we passed backing, we failed the drive, and we failed the drive. So I'm at my record. I'm going on to my sixth test on Saturday. Oh, like, finally you're up with me on my my one student I had do that. You remember that one student I had, Tippy Toes? And times? he's still working here too. He did a good job finally once he realized what he was doing wrong. But how many times? How many times you test him? One pre-trip. Had to redo pre-trip. Finally passed pre-trip. Backing, backing. Finally passed backing. Road. Finally passed road. So how many times was that? Seven times. Wow. Shit. We got a super chat from Jesus Takes the Will. <laughs> Change the subject. <laughs> Let me see if this is from Tennessee Flatbed saying his GoFundMe on there. <laughs> no, it's not. Jesus Takes the Will says, I've arrived. 999 super chat. Appreciate it, brother, man. I he think he bought that super chat right from Walmart. My guys. He has one of my guys out on TNT. <laughs> Jesus has arrived, guys. Y'all, that's all y'all have to say. I didn't hear no clapping, no Jesus music, nothing. 
Other day I went to met a what? Other day I went and meditated by the lake for a whole hour about getting a set date to leave Prime. To leave for Prime. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I don't know nothing about meditation. Like I don't I don't We got another super chat by Jesus Takes the Will. Jesus, I'm trying to read comments. Let me go me back. Two ninety nine. <laughs> Two ninety nine. I don't see it yet. Now do you? What's it, What's it say? Because I don't see it yet. Time to go. Time to go. Jesus ain't playing around. He stops in. What's up, guys? And I'm hitting the road. All right. Where was I? At? New Albany, New Albany, Mississippi on my way home. Drive safe, man. After you get out of that Walmart, it's going to take a while. Yeah. <laughs> In four years, I never set more than three hours for a Walmart live unload. Look at Nick flexing on us, bro. He's like, bro. never more than three hours. What? Bro, I'm mean, like. Hey, that's still an hour of detention. Talking. Three hours is my minimum stay at Walmart. So you don't want to know my minimum stay at Walmart? No, I don't. Thirty minutes to unload mulch. <laughs> I'm trying to remember this. How was the conversation with the dinosaur last sun Saturday? I don't remember, man. I don't know. What's this a reference to? <laughs> I've been so busy here lately, man. I don't know. He's been busy being late. I've been y'all busy preparing here, for like, y'all. <laughs> I guess I got to play with my golden retriever since everyone said it looked like a golden retriever. It is so calming, especially when you're reading through comments. You know, you just focus. Uh, Whoa. First I ever said it was 36 hours at a shipper. I've sat for 38 hours at a uh, super value. I've sat at a Tyson for that long. Yeah. I took a reset at a Tyson. It was horrible. Hey, I've sat eight hours at a job site. Oh, Lord. Was it because you were late? <laughs> I was there 30 minutes before they got there. They didn't have the pad ready, and then the guy that knew how that was unloading me didn't know how to unload the truck. So we dropped the GoFundMe three times now. Yeah, y'all ain't donating, man. He's gonna break some legs. Read it, Thomas. Read it. Read every every bit of that. H T T. (laughs) Go for it. You want to put it in there so much? GoFundMe or Go Fund dot me backslash D two four. F six six D zero. You gonna talk about it some? What's it for? Because it's just a it's, random. It's to help me get my channel going. Help also when I do hit eight hundred subscribers to help me get my shirts so I can do the giveaways on the shirts because I'm gonna do screen printed shirts. You know how bad it would suck to be the person that donated and not be the person who got a shirt. Hey, I yes. remember who you don't who donates, and those pers- those people would actually get a shirt. And are you really donating from now anything on. that people paid for? <laughs> Every donation su- saves the life of one of Tennessee Flatbedder students because he wants to murder them. <laughs> and with that weekly donation to the GoFundMe, you will give him less stress and less work he has to do on that student where he's not beating him up for not getting the wheel turned to the right when he needed to turn to the right. And so that he's not as stressed out because he has received the donation. Only one donation of $9.99 per month will support this poor little student that has to put with, up with Tennessee flat better beating him up. Uh-huh. We got a super chat from Kiersey for 10 bucks. Hey, Kiersey, what's going on? Man, I hope you get back soon. We haven't seen you out there in a while. Trucking along with Kiersey, just saying hi. I got to go drive. Be safe, all. Be safe out there, Kiersey. Be safe, Kiersey. Okay. Hey, 
Versatal, you better tell her to be safe, you rude. Oh, yeah, be safe. I'm sorry, I got lost in one of the comments there. I was like, there's one coming up that's a doozy. Okay. Which one? This one? No, the Jason King comment. It's two more. We can we can go through them. We're almost there. Real quick, play that video. Oh, we want to hear from, um, are you talking about Peg Leg? Yep. We got to get to the Peg Leg video. Hey, everybody. Hit that like button. Borrow my leg to smash that ding-dong bell. Oh, and if you ain't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, too. That that comment? No, the next one. That one. <laughs> yeah. There you I, go. If I came to Prime, can I make $120,000 as a company driver like where I am at now? <laughs> oh, if you man. use Versatile Duck and Wings driver code of uh, VIR. <laughs> D U C K, you will make a hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. I am not guaranteeing that. Don't put my name on that. <laughs> Do not put my name on that. You like the flashing money too? Yeah, I am not guaranteeing a hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. Only if you use the versatile ducklings driver code will you make it rain like that. Are we wanting to get into that? I mean like so what would you say? What would you say to that? What, what's your response to that? I guess I don't know. It depends. It depends on are you just driving? Because I'm gonna say no. If you're just driving, no. Um, you gotta find if you could contribute something here at Prime Incorporated, you will make more money, guaranteed. Um, so if you become a trainer, TNT, PSD, you're efficient at it. You're getting them in, you're getting them out, you know, got people staying, you know, you can rack up bonuses and stuff like that. You could break, you could break the hundred thousand mark. Um, but yeah, it's all about, it's all about if you're playing the prime game, you know, if you're teaching someone to trade is definitely going to make you a lot more money than just driving the truck. You know, that's what I'm going to say about it. <laughs> The wait, the wait list is 200 waiting. I I just Googled it, and um, let's see. On the reefer side, we have 60 people waiting. On the flatbed side, we have eight people waiting. And on the tanker side, we have two people waiting. So are you talking about the wait list for a truck? They let us see that now, so like I just I had to look it up. Two hundred. Yeah, you'll have to show me that tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna have to show me that list tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah. That's just something I've I found out here recently. I found that out here here recently, but it's a, the driver wait list. Um, list of drivers waiting on their truck. Driver code slash reefer. So it's telling you that it has their driver code on here. That's why I don't want to show it. Or, yeah, that's um, why I said show me tomorrow. There's 60 people for the reefer. Flatbed, eight. Anchor, two. I mean, I don't see 200. What's up? 60 plus eight, that's 68, plus another two, that's 70. And we're going to go to Versatile Duckling. He, he has the weather coming in. He's going to give us our weather report for the day. Yeah, it's going to rain all weekend. Um, Tennessee, Oof. have you have you figured out how to use, like, YouTube bots or something? Because there's another GoFundMe link in here. There's another what? There's another GoFundMe link in here now. <laughs> He's got, like, a bot just spamming the chat with them every 30 or, like, some odd seconds. With this one, this one, yeah. Because <laughs> the other one is at eight oh three, and then that one's at eight oh eight. Man, <laughs> he's just—he's got a bot in here. Yeah, bro, are you using your gun? 
Are you using your GoFundMes to buy bots to keep posting the link on every <laughs> live you see online? Dang it, you found me out. Because he hasn't moved his hands at all. So he's not clicking on nothing, man. He's not clicking on anything. He's got them bots. Uh, Kiersey, I don't know where you got the wait list was uh, 200. I mean, you might know more than me. As as you were the member of you were a member of DAB, so I'm sure you can look at a lot more stuff than I can. But um, I just go off of that right there, where I can look at how many people are at shows that are waiting on a truck. I don't, I don't mean to say that you're wrong. I'm just curious, like where where you get the 200 from? Did your fleet manager tell you there was 200 people waiting on a truck, or I'm not sure? Best nation is nation. The best nation is a donation. Yeah, best nation is donation. I didn't, still hadn't seen nobody donate to my GoFundMe. Don't worry, I'm sure in another three minutes we'll see another uh, post. Russ, I don't have none of these hats right now. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't have no more of these hats. They all sold. They sold really quick. I don't have any made right now, but I will be getting some more pretty soon. Because once I hit... Once I hit 3K subscribers, I'm going to come out with a new batch. And I'm pretty sure that they're going to be gray. Okay, his is in bad lightning. It just looks like it's blurred. Like, maybe move back from the camera and turn that light at a different angle in that hat. Put the light over to the side. This is just making it glow. It's the top light. There we go. Is it? The, that's a purple one, but um, whenever we do get the, when we do, whenever I hit 3K subscribers and I buy the next batch of hats, I will have one for you. Still has the tag on it too. Yeah, see, he came over. Tennessee came over, and that was a gift for me to him for helping me, helping me be fair on the hats. So the way I tried to keep it fair on the hats is. I had him right here at the house. That way, whenever I asked the question on my live and we were giving out a hat, we both clicked open the phone, and the first person that sent the message got the hat. So, you know, I did a giveaway. We gave away, gave away four hats, if I'm not wrong. Did we give Scourge. Pawns with a donation for 10 bucks. Time to drive all night long. Yeah, Hans told me he wasn't going to make it tonight, but we're glad he made it tonight. Thank you for the super trucker giving out the $10. Oh. How long do you – how – that M threw me off, man. That that M threw me off. How long after how long TNT after do you TNT have to wait for a truck? Wait on a truck if you're going company. Same as lease. Oh, am I answering the question? I wasn't reading it. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Get on board. It's It I, It all depends. Um, I think in some ways, lease takes a bit of priority. You know, they're out there. They're going to be making truck payments. Company guys, we don't make truck payments. Um, so I guess it depends on what you look, how you look at it, you know. But there's plenty of trucks that when they do come in, that anybody who's waiting usually gets one within maybe a week. I had a, I've had students come in pretty consistently this month, and the longest one that I've seen sit was for nine days. So that's nine my days. That's not too long. Then I see your question. Two hundred two hundred drivers waiting on trucks. See, I don't have a list, so I couldn't answer that question. Yeah, we started a snowball. Yeah, we'll effect redo that it. One. There you go. Oh, so now we're we're clicking on them and putting it on us to read the questions. <laughs> yeah, get with the program, Tennessee. <laughs> depends, depends on how many trucks available. It took me a week when I was company, but can take longer or shorter. I'm first on the Tennessee, Tennessee shirt list. list. Twisted hat list. 
Look, he's trying to jump right ahead of everybody. You see I'm this? first. Well, well, Sam, I haven't seen one donation come from you for my GoFundMe, so we'll, we're questioning that one yet. I've donated quite a bit. <laughs> he was the anonymous guy, along with me and um, Versatile Duckling. All the n- anonymous ones you got was from us. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Open... <clears throat> Open the next live in a scary mask. Hey, I did this one. In a scream mask. Oh, a scream mask? I don't have a scream mask. <laughs> Can you wait at home until a truck is available? And what terminal do you go to to pick up a truck? Or for a truck pickup? Oh, any terminal. Uh, Prime has trucks go to all terminals. Um, depending on where the numbers are, sometimes you might you're if one you probably have a dispatcher at this point. You will have a dispatcher at this point. Um, they might you know send you up to Pinston, or if you're in Pinston, they might send you down to uh, Springfield uh, to get your truck. Um, it's pretty rare that they're going to send you all the way to Salt Lake City, but if there's more trucks over there, then you know you're more than willing to go there and get a truck. So yeah, you can go get a truck anywhere. Uh, but no, you cannot. I don't. Yeah, you can wait. No, I don't know about the home thing, Daniel. I don't know about that part. There you go. Yeah, dude. I will tell you what, this stuff gets me heated right here, though. Like I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, the the home thing gets me kind of heated because my deal is that you're supposed to stay on that truck until. Until you upgrade, like whenever we came in, we had to stay on our trainer's truck until they had a truck for us or until we were able to upgrade. So these people that like, I want to go home till I'm available to take the class. Like, I I believe that Prime is babying people too much, man. And it's, my opinion is that Prime is babying us too much, babying these guys too much. I want to go home. I want to go home. Like, I get sick and tired of hearing people that say, I want to go home. Like, do your time, bro. Like, before, between PSD and TNT, like, I get on my CDL. I want to go home. I took my test. I want to go home. Like, I'm telling you right now that that just irritates me. I'm not even playing. Like, that irritates me. I do not like to hear people crying. I want to go home, man. Like, you came out here for an over-the-road dry job. You need to suck it up and, like, do your time. Don't be over here complaining about, like, I need to go home. It just drives me nuts. When you're on a truck and you're coming to upgrade, I think that you should stay on your trainer's truck, not this, well, I did my 30K miles, so I'm going to go home until I'm able to till they call me for my class. I don't like that. I don't respect that. I don't. I don't like that at all. Whenever it's time for you to get on that list to get a truck or come in here to take the class, I think that your fleet manager should put you on the list to take that, to be able to come upgrade. And you should go run freight until they call your name to come take that class. Another thing I'm getting sick and tired of hearing is people complaining on PSD. My trainer took me over the road for PSD, and this is BS that I have to do this driving. You know what? That is experience for you. It really is. You should be thankful that your PSD trainer is letting you drive those miles. You need that experience. Stop being ungrateful and saying, I sh- I'm not driving because I'm not getting paid or my trainer's not driving, so I don't have to. Bro, the experience you're getting is what you need to pass your CDL test. And you are getting that real life experience being over the road. Stop complaining. Stop crying. Like, you want to do this job? Oh, I have to go in and do paperwork with my trainer or I, I need to follow my trainer in the, the warehouse to count the product coming on the truck. Of course you do. Get out the truck. If your trainer's out the truck and he's going in there to count product, you need to get out the truck and go in there and count the product with your trainer and make sure that it's getting loaded right. You, you want to learn. You want some experience. Get out that truck and go with your trainer. And, like, I'm sorry that I'm getting all hot about this, but I get tired of hearing people complain about this. No, you're right. Like, how much experience do you want? How much do you want? How good do you want to be before you get onto your own truck? That's what it boils down to. It does. 
and people that want to complain and cry about it and I want home time, I want this, I want that. You like Prime needs to stop babying people. Like I I'm sick of people showing up late, really. You're showing up late. I tell you to be here at six o'clock and you're not here at six o'clock. What happened to the days that we used to send people home? It was two strikes and you're out. You come right. the first time and you're late. Hey, that's your last straw, man. You come one more time late and we're sending you home. What happened to those days? Yeah. They man, do that I'm over sorry, the I campus. Got on a high horse right there, but um, that question right there kind of like got me into, I don't know. What oh, I, I, I agree with you on that. Um, over at the campus, if you're late to class, they do send you home. Yeah. It's when you finally like badge they, out. Not like they used to. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I know, not like they used to, but it still happens. I don't know. I'll share. I'll share a little tidbit. I, I agree with Twisted 100 percent on this one. When I came in, when I came in, I drove PSD just like everybody else. I drove until my permit was four days from expiring. And then I only got two hours on a Saturday, two hours on a Sunday to practice all six maneuvers. Well, four maneuvers, six variations of those maneuvers in a flatbed, no experience ever in my entire life. And then I still trifecta on a Monday. I think it's a drive, a determination and initiative, um, being able to be coached, the complaining and all that stuff. I mean, it's a process, man. It doesn't matter how fast you rush it to learn all this stuff. You're still sitting here for 14 days. You're not going home anytime in that period. TNT, I mean, I always tell my students, dog it out. It's you If you dog out TNT, it's only going to take you four weeks, five weeks, max six weeks, you know, depending on loads and stuff like that. If you're going coast to coast, and then going home after that is just going to hurt you even more. Um, I always try to tell my students, man, stay in the forefront of Prime's mind. If you're at home, you're not in Prime's mind. If you're at, if you're in Springfield or Princeton or Utah, and you're eating on their dime and sleeping on their dime, you're on Prime's mind. You don't want to wait for a truck, sit here, and spend their money. They'll get you a truck. Um, but you come here, you got to make a certain type of sacrifice. We all do. Even us as PSD trainers, we take a certain sacrifice from, you know, because, you know, some, I know Hans just said this, and I'm just going to go ahead and read the comment. If they got family, they should be able to go home. The office people get to go home. That's the difference between office people and us, you know. We have we have a different job. You know, if you work on an oil rig in the middle of the ocean, you're working out there for months at a time. If you're in the military, you're being deployed for nine months and you don't get to see home. It's the job you sign up for. Um, and you should definitely, you know, be able to handle that and do your proper research to know that this is what you're getting yourself into. It's it's a month, two months out on the road if you want to be profitable in any type of way. Right. Yeah. Trucking is, is a on the road. That's what we do is we deliver freight. It takes weeks to months before we finally get, can get home to, <laughs> to see our family. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's, you come to this, do this job, you come expecting to be out for a long period of time. You do have that chance to get going home, but you need to run that freight. Get that stuff moving. Make that truck revenue. If you're buying a truck or leasing a truck, that truck has got to be paid first before you worry about going home. Yeah. And and I I agree that people with families need to be able to go home. I'm not saying take your home time completely away from you. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, whenever there's time to work, you need to work. Stop this bickering and crying about. I finished 30k miles and my TNT trainers taking advantage of me. I don't like hearing that. I really don't. Like I I completely agree that people need home time during TNT. Like you need to go home for a good week to get away from that trailer that trainer and you know that way y'all have some time apart. There is going to be home time. There is time that you need to switch your CDL over after PSD. Not soon as you pass the test. Because they might have a TNT trainer right there for you. And that's why I respect Matt B. Because Matt B's TNT trainer, he tested on Saturday. He passed this test. And the next day, his trainer said, that, hey, Sunday morning, we're leaving on a load. I got a load to, to South Carolina or whatever, wherever they were going. He's all like, we're leaving tomorrow morning. And guess what? Matt B packed up his stuff and he went. 
And he was all like, hey, whenever we get time or they made an arrangement, hey, we're going to be send you home on this day for this amount of time to go get your CDL switched over. And, you know, I have mad respect for Matt B. He was in been here earlier, I think, or maybe I was talking about him earlier. But I have mad respect for him because he, he manned up. And he, at first he was all like, man, I really wanted to go – go home for a little while and i i was like dude you need to run freight like it, it's it's in it's like man i i get tired of people saying that i probably went off on them just like that and i said hey man i'm sick and tired of y'all talking about going home all the time oh like, i had i had one the road drop i had one i had one last piece of this before we move on everybody comes into trucking for the money or for the adventure those things Take sacrifice. If you want to see the country, then you're not going to see home. If you want to make the money that you're expecting to make, especially if you have this huge number in your head and you have this ambition of owning trucks and leasing and all this other stuff, then you have to understand that everything takes a certain amount of sacrifice in life. Um, even, you know, so just everything. If you want to run a truck, just like Tennessee said, yeah, that truck payment is going to come first. If you want to own multiple trucks, that business is going to come first. You know, um, I just, you know, I just think that you have to understand that there is a certain level of sacrifice with anything. You know, if you want to be a lawyer, you got to sacrifice time you have to sit at home on cases, you know, everything, anything that's going to make you a decent amount of money is going to take a significant amount of sacrifice. And I don't think a lot of people appreciate that enough um, that there is a huge amount of sacrifice that goes into everything that we do here. Even us as trainers, I sacrifice a lot of personal time with family. Uh, to put in a few extra hours on the pad or over the road or something like that. Um, and then, you know, you get socially drained. After spending an entire day with three or four people every single day, you get socially drained. And then you're, you know, then there's a small things about it being asked the same question, especially, you know, people like us three who have trained 200 some odd students, you get asked the same questions every week on a dime. You know, so I think, you know, you have to be willing to make those type of sacrifices and be able to adjust well to that. All right, next question. Let's get off of that subject. Right <laughs> yeah, here. we went we went pretty hard down that rabbit hole. In terms of total miles, what's the longest load each of you have done? Tennessee flat better since yours is the shortest. You go ahead and talk about your Texas to Oklahoma. No, my longest load was from Pueblo, Pueblo, Colorado to Miami, Florida. My longest haul would have been uh, Compton, California to, I think it was in the middle of South Carolina, North Carolina. Bro, I know that you've been to Colton, California, Walmart, and their loads always go to Maine. Who me? I have. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been to a Walmart in uh, California. In California, I do the ones that I've always been set up with in Cali is a Seven Up Factory, um, FedEx, and then Cherry strawberries. Berries? No, never heard of that. What? Never okay, that. so my, wait, hang on, wait, hang on. Cherry Perry's is that the cherry load that they always have to get the the pallets long ways instead of to get them to fit? They they put them they put them at like um they're not long ways they're they're like a diamond shape I, I I've, yeah they, they have to do them special boss. to get it right I've done that one yeah they, I know what you're talking about but uh mine was either Colton California to somewhere in Maine I can't remember there's a Walmart DC up there and it's probably that one or I went from Miami Florida to let me look. North of Seattle, Seattle, Washington, go up, go up, Blaine, Washington, like you could see, you could see Canada from, from like right there, like the shipper I was at, they're all like, man, see that, that rock over there? I was like, yeah, he goes, that rock is in Canada, so from there to Miami. I don't know the exact <laughs> mileage. Probably over three thousand mile load.
Uh, Sam says, Lone Wolf. From what I understand, yes, you are. That's on the other topic. And you have to be back within 48 hours when you are called. See, and I don't think that they should do that. See, y'all get me on that stuff again. Yeah. I don't think that they should do that. You want to go home for a while and wait on a list? after? You know what they used to do after three weeks of you being off? Like, say you were all like, man, I want to be off this truck. Let me remove this real quick. After about three weeks of you being off of the truck, I think it was like three weeks and so many, like three or four days, they used to just separate you. They're all like, you know what? This guy hasn't worked in this long. We're separating them. They don't work for Prime no more. Like, yep. Get back to those days. Separate a bunch of people that want to be off all the time. We don't need those guys that want to be off. To See, there I go getting on my high horse again. Yeah. <laughs> First on Tennessee. Uh, Hans, I'm pretty sure that you're probably one of the mo- the highest guys on that list. He looks bored as hell. I think he, he fell asleep. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Dude, you got to go get the shaving cream and spray it in his hand and tickle his nose with a feather. Oh, Lord. Never mind. <laughs> As a company driver, can you request what truck you would like, like a Peterbilt or over Freightliner? No, no. That's a, that's another that's another thing that's starting to get under my skin a little bit is the pickiness of trucks. It's a truck, man. Um, Prime takes really good care of these trucks. They're all well maintained, um, and especially if your company. I don't see where the pickiness is coming from. Um, maintenance wise, you ain't got to worry about it, so I don't know why it matters. Um, it's just stuff like that. That's just, I don't know. I don't get it. You know, all these trucks are well built nowadays. Even the internationals, when I leased mine, I never had an issue with mine. I think those are stereotypes that should really just be put in the past. Like I say, I want a truck that doesn't break down. Give me that one. Yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna happen soon. Bro, my oh, truck, yeah. my my truck this week, the dash was lit up like a Christmas tree. I had a I had to reach over there and shift gears on my truck, like up and down. I, like I had a downshift and an upshift because my truck wouldn't even shift gears. I was going to put it in Freightliner. Then the lights went off. Every light went off on it, and I was like, oh, we're rolling again. Then picking up those crappy Eco Shred trailers that I can't stand, boom, I'm lit up like a Christmas tree again, and my truck won't shift. I have to yeah. manually shift over there. I have to reach over there and go click, 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 click. Have you ran into that um, versatile? I've yeah, I've had I've had some weird stuff going on with my truck, and it's a Freightliner. Both of our trucks are Freightliners, so there goes that dispels the myth that you know certain trucks aren't going to have certain problems. Um, but yeah, I, the Eco Shred trailers are starting to. I think it's time to replace those. Man, they're so out of shape. Tried that one. Uh, but I never heard of. Never heard this tone from Twisted. Like you being <laughs> all hyped like that. <laughs> Sam's been out there with uh, me training one of my students that wouldn't listen, so he definitely lying about that. He's heard that tone. Oh yeah. Well, go ahead and say it. Read that one because it's all yours, brother. Oh, he's already yeah, put another link. Yeah. Did he put another link? I already he put, put him in a timeout earlier. I put yeah. him in a timeout earlier. He's, he's, another got, one in he's got another link in here, man. Oh, man. He that, does he, have another link yeah. in there. <laughs> he's got them bots, bro. He's got them bots, man. He's almost as bad as these people sitting on the corners like in Springfield, says, put man. Put timer, timeout, or block user. Like I already did a timeout. Should I do the block? <laughs> You're in timeout again, buddy. I think. I think at this point, this is advertisement. You're gonna have to like give him a percentage of everything you get from here on out. <laughs> no, really, I do appreciate if anybody time. does donate. <laughs> If you, you don't have to, if you don't like, want to. That is, who's talking? Who wants to talk? Just know that he has that pulled up on his second screen watching them numbers not move. I'm just going to say that, you know. Who else Watch was him. talking about, like? There All you right, go. PS3 students like that is why I don't train anymore. 
too many crybabies. Like I'm, you you do see it a lot. Yeah, you know, us PSD trainers, like we have to deal with a lot of BS, and you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, like that's pretty much what we do is we have to figure out how to make this guy happy so he can start learning. Yeah. Because if he's not happy, then he's not going to be learning kind of deal. People are just here lately. I think, I don't, I don't know what it is, but here lately people are acting like prime is just prime will give you whatever you want. You complain enough and prime's going to give you what you want. And like, yeah. it's, I don't know. I just don't understand it. How, how do you guys feel? Me personally, um, I I have to agree, man. I think I don't know if it's a level of entitlement that people are coming in with, a level of um, twisted expectation, um, or maybe it's the the current way that it's operating, the whole system and its whole. Because um, I get it, we we need drivers and. Uh, it's always making the company grow, but I don't think that we're that, that we should look desperate is the way I would say it to be as blunt as possible. It looks desperate. Um, keeping some of these people here. Well, you get that guy behind you a pillow. He looks so uncomfortable. <laughs> and yeah, he's slowly sliding down that couch. Yeah. He's about to be asleep yeah. by the time we're done. A pillow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mine was from May Miami to Blaine, Washington. Yes, I did. That's the same one I was talking about. I don't know what's further, the Colton, California, to the Walmart DC. I don't remember where the Walmart DC is in is in Miami, uh, Maine. I'll t I'll tell you one thing about that DC, and you people will know if they've been there or not. But at that DC that I'm talking about in in uh, Maine, when you go in there, there they say, "Hey, we got a lot of trailers. You want to take three or four with you?" Because what happens is people go in there at that drop and hook, hook Walmart, and they're all like, "Man, I don't want another load in Maine. I'm gonna bobtail out of here." So like they call their dispatcher and they say, "Hey, they don't got no trailers over here," and they bobtail out of there. And there's a ton of trailers up there. You need a trailer? You ever need a trailer? They got them in Maine. So, if you guys stay out delivering loads on time for a month and a half, even two months at a time, how much can you make estimated? If it's consistent, like just dropping a hook back and forth, like over and over again, I would say $1,300 a week, $1,400 a week. Yeah, that's I was gonna say. Yeah, that's if it's consistent. About, it just it just depends. The problem the problem with this question is we get questions like this a lot. Whenever it yeah. comes to pay, we can't really give you an exact number because we have our good weeks, we have our bad weeks. Something might happen to your truck, something might not happen to your truck. You might <laughs> you might get detention pay this week, you might not get detention pay this week. There's a whole bunch of variables in trucking. Now, if we were averaging 2,500 miles a week at 41 cents per mile, plus per diem, minus your taxes, um, all that stuff, I would say a rough estimate would be about eight, 800 to 1,000. What did you go? 1,400? Yeah, I would say 1,400. If So, like, like you're saying, Somewhere it is... There. Yeah, it's it's super scenario based. If you're somewhere, you know, depending on how it goes, we don't um, ask the flat better. He ain't running that hard. Yeah, I would say, <laughs> I would say you got to think about wait times. If you're sitting somewhere for three or four or five hours waiting, then in, then your dispatcher has to also be able to compensate for that time, which means he might not pre-plan you until that next day. Um, you might not scan in a load on the pay week which means it goes to the next pay week, which means you got like an $800 paycheck that week. But the next week, since you put like four loads on that week, you got like a $2,500 paycheck, um, which it evens out a little bit sometimes like that. Yep. It's just, it is super inconsistent, but it's also 
It's inconsistently consistent. There you go. It's a good way of Tennessee, um, it's your turn to answer that question. So if you put on five tarps on this day and six tarps on that day and two straps on that day and three chains on that day, how much did you make a week? Enough money. <laughs> Screw all that. <laughs> Screw that, dude. <Abe. laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> Lewiston, Maine. Yeah, now that sounds right. Walmart DC. Yes, it's a Walmart DC. How often Never. do you get loads to Canada? Never. I don't have Never. a passport. I don't want it. I I don't feel like it's gonna do a. I, I'm not allowed there. in. I've heard I've heard so many horror stories. From I've I all right, so this was an owner operator that I heard this story from, and I'll make it super quick. Um, he went across the border, brought back some ice cream, and they kept him at uh customs long enough for the ice cream to go bad. So, yeah, well, that was pretty quick, yeah, that was pretty quick. It's a whole long story, but yeah, it's bad. I wouldn't want to go through customs on the Canadian border at all. <laughs> That's my question for one of you guys who wants it, Tennessee, oh. you read it. Duckling also rides a Vespa, not a Harley. Laugh out loud. <laughs> oh, really? Is he over there cracking up. He said, "See you." Hey, Look, no. he already put a comment in there before we even seen that. Look, LOL, David. Granny, I know he rides an automatic bike. I still give him props for putting air through his hair. Yeah, bro, he has a motorcycle. He has one. Yeah, I go he knows I give him crap about it, but yet he's still out there riding. That's what I give him props for. Yeah, he oh. has one. Uh, I go fast. <laughs> My name's Jeff. <laughs> My name's Jeff. I go fast. <laughs> Does your GoFundMe take Bitcoin? That GoFundMe is such a cheap hooker, it would take anything you give it. I'm surprised we haven't seen another one. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> you taking Bitcoin in your GoFundMe? I'm surprised we haven't seen another one either. Hans, I'm surprised Hans ain't putting the link in there because he said Hans has it on speed dial. <laughs> we should all just sit here and spam. You didn't answer the question. We'll let you answer that question. I don't know. I haven't tried yet. Oh, there it is. There it is. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> and there again. He came off a timeout. Look, he's going right back in timeout. <laughs> You're back in timeout, buddy. <laughs> You're naughty, naughty. Uh, hey, you can't. T Go ahead. What were you going to say? I was going to say, read, read, read that real quick, and then I'll say what I was going to say. Oh, okay. He... He, if a broke PSD student can donate, y'all better hook the at symbol Tennessee up. <laughs> I love how he read that exactly as it's written, dude. <laughs> Those flat betters, they speak weird. Look, Tennessee already knew what he said. He's laughing. <laughs> he, if a broke student can donate, comma, y'all better hook at Tennessee up. <laughs> <laughs> it's in that it's in that broken English Tennessee be speaking. He yeah. had, Jeffrey no Jeffrey went on a two loads with Tennessee flat better. He went on two or he went out for two nights with him or two nights, three days, whatever it was. So he had to learn Tennessee flat better's language. So I read it like it was like it was wrote because I know Tennessee's the only guy that could translate that. Go ahead and translate it. Puerto Rican in the background. You go on the road with Tennessee, you come back a clone. Yeah. Steven! Steven! He works at Taco Bell, guys. 
And he's got a shirt on this time. <laughs> oh, oh, crap. We've got a bot in chat. So we can understand what it is. Hey, we got a bot in here, guys. Man, he you know, he, he put in as many as you have for donations in like five seconds. Go ahead and translate that. You did it pretty well. Oh, you understood it? Well, did you have a comment on it? No, I didn't comment on that. He's getting free publicity. <laughs> Wait, we can't. I like how Steven's back there just T-posing. Uh, yeah. Steven back there. <laughs> no, T-pose, Steven. You know T-pose. No, T-pose. But there you go. Looking like a straight bot. <laughs> You're going to make my look like my streams froze. What happened to the no questions, a stupid question? All questions are stupid questions. Who Steven, asked, that's a comment who, for you. What happened to no question is a stupid question? Okay. <laughs> he said he don't get it. <laughs> All questions are stupid questions, but when you ask a stupid question, you're just a little less stupid the next when you get the answer. Nobody asks. Can someone check that guy's pulse on the sofa? Needs a wellness check. <laughs> oh, he read that one. <laughs> oh. Oh, that. His forefinger is longer than every other finger on his hand, though. Yeah. <laughs> he uses that one quite a bit, man. He's been driving for 18 years, some odd right now, right? He's been Don't driving for 18 years and you can't get the brother a pillow? Nah, man, but they, he's probably used that middle finger quite a bit over the road. So that's probably why it's so long. It gets I hear extended. Too many students crying at the campus in. Hard to bite my tongue, bro. It is hard. Like, don't do it anymore. Just speak your mind. RJ, do company drivers only get lightweight trucks, or do they just get what's available at the time? Tennessee. You're not gonna answer it. Well, we actually had some headache racks put on some lightweights for flatbed too. So, but I haven't seen any in the yard here lately. So, it gets what's available. You should take what's available. Oops, yeah. Oops. My bad. You get what's available, and you should take what's available. The only difference, in my opinion, and I've, this is coming from my personal opinion and my personal experience. I drove a lightweight. Um, the only thing you're losing is floor space. That's all you're losing is like a little tiny walkway. Other than that, you got basically all the same amount of space under the bunk. You got your above the bed is where your storage would be instead of on the sides. You get all the same amount of room. Not really that much different. And you get paid more. That's what they complain about. Yeah, I've never had to worry about getting a lightweight because I was I brought in a teammate whenever I came in, so I. When it was time for me to get a truck, I say, hey, I got a teammate that's going to get on the truck with me, so I prefer not to get a lightweight so I don't have to move trucks. So then they gave me a they gave me a manual truck, and whenever I got my teammate, he moved on to it. And in about six months, once we got comfortable in there and got everything like we wanted it, and that truck fully decked out how we wanted it, about six, seven months later, they say, hey, come in here. We got you a brand new truck, and they put me in a brand new truck. I'm yep. like, wow, y'all suck. Yep, I finished like, my... We'll give you this really <laughs> old one. I finished my lease, and I got put in a lightweight, and after I kept that lightweight until I became a trainer. How long was your lease? Uh, it was a small one. I uh, ended up... I think it was like a two-year one, I think. That was about it. And then I ended up uh, getting that lightweight, and I stayed in that lightweight for... A year? About a year. Maybe a little less than a year. There's no difference How in the lightweight. How was huge completion bonus? Non-existent. I had, a, I had a terrible experience. I don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to talk about it. There were so many repairs on that truck. You want to elaborate? Uh, Alright, so when you, when you turn in a lease... And this was like... This was 2000... 18 when you turn in a when you turn in a lease they you get 
they go through your truck before they turn over any of your funds, and then they hand you a bill. Basically, it's repairs, detailing, everything like that. My my strong suggestion is if you are lease and you're coming up, you're ending one or you're coming up completion or you're going into a new truck, a new lease, you just ordered one or something like that, clean the hell out of your truck. And do as much as possible to fix whatever you can yourself. It's going to come out a lot cheaper than what they hand you. That's just my opinion. Did you get force dispatched to New York City? That place is a something hole. No, we have a drop yard over there. I've never had a... In the city, we have a drop yard over there. And we got local drivers that do that stuff. So we don't have to worry about all those low bridges and the headache of that. It is only a flatbed thing. Yeah, I heard flatbed guys get there. But we were talking about those flatbed guys that leave the, leave the south. Yeah. And unfortunately, I don't go past Pennsylvania, but. This, this guy doesn't go. This guy doesn't go past the Mississippi. And he really doesn't go past the top of uh, Missouri. And he doesn't go, <laughs> doesn't go past Oklahoma. <laughs> Is that about right? <laughs> Not past Oklahoma. Oh, Russ actually has a really good comment there. Yeah, I was getting to it. Okay. When students ask me about pay, I ask them, what are your goals? Company driver, lease, solo, team, OTR, regional, or in what division? The thing about this industry is a lot of flexibility, and that's 100% true. I'm actually going to steal that from you, Russ. That's actually a really good quote. Yeah, and and especially here at um, especially here at Prime Inc. Prime Inc. is pretty much the hey, you do whatever you want to do here. If you want to go lease, go lease. You want to go company, go company. You want to go lease, then go company, go for it. You want to buy a fleet and run it under my pulling my prime trailers? I'm cool with that too. Go for it. Like it is their their pretty much slogan. It seems like is. Come to Prime and make as much money as you want or make as little as you want is what I feel. Like there is opportunities to do whatever you want. I had a student that came in this week. I, I met up with him. He's buying his first truck. He put $55,000. I hope he doesn't mind me saying that. He put $55,000 down on this truck to, I think he paid 55 per, 52% down because he doesn't have good credit to wow. go ahead and get the truck. It's a one of the pedigrees trucks, but he had to put a high amount down, down because he didn't have good credit and he hasn't worked at Prime long enough. But he wanted to buy his own truck and he did it. And like he's on his way to starting up his own fleet. I've yeah. had another student a while back um, – Great guy. He had three trucks here at Prime. He's actually taking them away from Prime now, and he's doing his own thing with another company, and he has, I, I want to say he has two trailers now, three trucks and two trailers, and he's successful at it. So, like, he learned what to do and to run his own fleet and stuff like that, and he's out there doing his thing. That's that type of initiative that we need, man. And that's... Like my first safety meeting ever. That's the one thing that I that stands out to me this day is Rob Lowe coming in there and he said, "Hey, here at Prime, if you want a guaranteed paycheck every week, you go company. If you want to go out there and run your own business and be lease and make your own money, then do it. If you want to start your own fleet and have all these guys driving from you, like Wilson over there said it right there. <clears throat> hey, how many trucks you have? And at the time, Wilson said." I have about 200 trucks. This was a while back. He said, I got 200 trucks. He said, look at that. Wilson got 200 trucks. Then he said, Jim Palmer, what, how many trucks you got? Jim Palmer, I forgot what he said. But he's all <laughs> like, so if you want to run your own fleet, just pull my trailers. So he still makes money. Still making money. He's just like, man, you do what you want here. You want to make a lot of money, make a lot of money. You don't, then don't. Pegleg has a question. No, it's not a question. It's a statement. Semi trucks are only allowed on the Manhattan between midnight and 5 a.m. 
Yeah, I wanna I wanna go to Sam's comment so I can really give him the middle finger. Which one? Sam was I had a this one? No, nah, one more up. <laughs> we are on a PG thirteen rating. I'm gonna have to blur that out after this live has ended. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, man? Two or two? Uh, we're sitting on two hours. Yeah, I was gonna. I was about to get there. So, yeah, we so, made up for the hour I missed. So that's good. <laughs> we made it. Hey, like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you are also subscribing to Tennessee Flat Better. Yeah, come and, over and like my right, channel. Oh, Mr. GoFundMe himself. We're about to change his name to GoFundMe Flat Better. And we have <laughs> Versatile Duckling with um, just homeless guys sleeping on the couch behind him. <laughs> <laughs> They're all having good times. We, we are getting out of here, guys. Thank you for stopping by. I hope we answered a lot of questions that y'all had. And Versatile Duckling, thank you for sharing your personal experience of you trying to get rid of your automatic restriction. And we are out of here. Later.